You're listening to the Sean and Drew Podcast, Episode 2. Well, here we are again, back for another episode of the Sean and Drew Podcast. How are you doing today, Drew? Oh, I could be better, Sean. A new gun store just opened up down the street, even though I wrote a long letter to the town begging them not to allow it. Wait, you wrote a letter to the town to protest a new gun store? What'd what'd you say? Just that the new gun store will trigger every single snowflake in our community and that guns are scary because they make loud noises and hurt things. Boy, Drew, that sure is a convincing argument. Yeah? You really think so, Sean? Not in the slightest. Did the town write back? Yeah, they said that the new gun store is going to be built no matter what, and that it'll be an excellent addition to the community. Well, they're probably right. I mean, this town does have a lot of gun owners. Now that I think of it, that's probably why Cabela's is opening up a new store in town, too. Cabela's? Uh, let's move on before this spirals out of control, shall we? We're going to get to your questions and comments in just a moment, but first, we want to personally thank everyone who tuned in to our first podcast. Your support has just been overwhelming, and we're so, so happy that you enjoy the content. Yeah, in the last episode, I got pooped on by a bird, but if... Twice. What? I'm just reminding them that you got pooped on by a bird not once, but twice. Well, I was just going to say that even though I experienced some emotionally damaging things that last episode, including, yes, getting pooped on twice, I'm happy that you enjoyed it. And with that, let's get into some fan mail. Chris from Indiana writes, How do you think things will go with Trump getting COVID? Well, Chris, at the time of this recording, President Trump has knocked out the coronavirus and seems to be doing well. But when it was first announced that Trump tested positive for COVID-19, I admittedly was a little worried. President Trump is 74 years old, making him a bit more vulnerable to the coronavirus than other demographics. Thankfully, he was able to get back on his feet quickly, no thanks to the mainstream media, which, let's be honest, was really hoping he would stay down. And I'll just say that even though he triggers me every single day, and even though I disagree with him on just about everything, I'm glad that the president was able to make a speedy recovery. Wow. You know, Drew, that was a really mature thing to say. So many other liberals out there were mocking the president and saying that he deserves this. Look, I don't care how much you dislike Donald Trump. Wishing him ill is a disgusting thing to do and shouldn't be tolerated by anyone. All right, let's move on to a question from Marsman45, who writes, Hello from Ohio, big fan of the Living with a Liberal series. I was wondering if Drew could answer this question. How do you feel about the many people injured from the many BLM riots that have caused $1 million plus in property damage? Uh, Drew, take it away. What? Sorry, Sean, I was texting my mom. Are you kidding me? What would... You know what? I I don't want to know. Go ahead and answer the question. What question? The question about the riots! Okay! Well, first of all, Sean, I think we can both agree that these riots were mostly peaceful. Dude, you have got to stop watching so much CNN. That could not be further from the truth. Second, I don't agree with destroying personal property. I've seen firsthand how tragic that can be, especially to fragile snowflakes such as myself. Remember that time you filled my safe space with MAGA hats, Sean? I couldn't go in there for weeks! Yeah, I do remember that. Cost me a lot of money, but it was well worth it. I don't think it was funny, Sean! I still have nightmares about it to this day! Alright, Drew, listen, you want to talk about property damage? What about that time you used permanent marker to label literally everything in the apartment as racist? Well, race is something that you should think about every single minute of every day, Sean. I was simply trying to remind you that practically everything around you, from the desk we're sitting at to the microphone in front of you, is racist. Spoken like a true liberal. Alright, next question is from Demon King 27 Hey, Drew, what would you do if Sean became vegan, liberal, and an anti-Trump person? Also, what would you do if you got free diapers from now on? Okay, first of all, Demon King, I would never, ever, 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 ever become a plant-eating, Trump-hating, whiny-ass liberal. It just wouldn't happen. But Drew, what would you do if I hypothetically did? Well, Sean, for one thing, I think we'd have a lot less arguments about what to eat for dinner. Tree bark is actually pretty tasty. Sorry, did you say tree bark? As in, you're eating tree bark? Well, I'm a vegan, so yeah. I know, but 
Why don't you just eat those weird plant burgers or something? Tree, tree bark isn't even edible. Well, you've never tried it, Sean, so how would you know? To get back to your question, Demon King, if Sean became an anti-Trump liberal like I am, then I think it would be the start of something really grand. Sean, maybe you'd even come to my Snowflakes United meetings and sit next to Randy and that weird kid with the hat? <laughs> no thank you. Well, will you at least consider it, Sean? Will you at least consider becoming a liberal? Drew, my friend, I'd rather jump off the top of a skyscraper and hope to clip my eyelid on a rusty nail. Well, when you put it that way... Moving on! Matthew from Illinois writes, Hi, I'm a huge fan of the podcast. Can you ask Drew how many diapers he buys in a month? Keep up the good work. P.S. Trump 2020. Drew, I'm actually going to guess the number, and you tell me how close I am. Okay, Sean, but you'd better guess high. 500. More! 750? More, Sean! Please tell me you're not pushing 1,000 diapers a month. 1,824 to be exact. You're kidding me. Drew, that's 60 diapers a day. Well, Sean, when you're a snowflake trying to live in a world where Donald Trump is president and conservatives are waving MAGA flags everywhere you look, you need that kind of leak protection. Right, right, I, I get all that, but I mean, 60 diapers a day? I don't even want to know how much that costs. Speaking of which, how do you get money for all this? Do you, you don't even have a job. Oh, I have my ways, Sean. I have my ways. All right, let's read one more. Logan in North Carolina writes, Why is it that Drew chooses kitty litter instead of a bigger or stronger safe space? Now, for those who didn't listen to last week's episode, Drew mentioned that he wants to cover the entire floor of his safe space in kitty litter for when his diapers are, um, defective. Well, Logan, of course I would like a bigger and stronger safe space, but trust me, if you don't take the time to make your floors extra absorbent with kitty litter, then you're making a huge mistake. When Donald Trump holds a rally that makes you run into your safe space, you can't rely solely on your diapers. Wow, Drew, you really have this down to a science, don't you? I don't play around when it comes to my safe space, Sean. You should know that by now. Oh, believe me, I know. Well, thank you to everyone who submitted questions this week. And hey, if you want to submit a comment or question to be read live on the podcast, send an email to jasonveely 76 at gmail.com. That's J-A-Y-S-O-N-V-E-L-E-Y 76 at gmail.com. We also have a P.O. Box if you're interested in sending us snail mail. The address for that is P.O. Box 190-119, Weathersfield, Connecticut, 06129. Weathersfield is spelled W-E-T-H-E-R-S-F-I-E-L-D. All right, Drew, people should be arriving in about five minutes. Are you going to wear that same brown button down you always wear, or are you going to change for once? Wait, Sean, did you say people are coming? Uh, yeah. You know, for the party that we've been planning for the past two weeks. <gasps> Sean, I forgot about that! I was going to spend the whole day mentally preparing myself for anything that might trigger me. You know I don't do well in social environments. Okay, Drew, calm down. It's just some of my good friends coming over. Granted, most of them are Trump supporters, but they're real nice and get along with just about anybody. You'll be fine. Oh, I don't know about this, Sean. I think I might just hide in my safe space for a few hours. Nope, I'm not going to allow that. Sorry, Drew, but I need to break you out of your shell a bit more. Here, I know what'll help. A nice shot of strong American whiskey. One for me. And one for you. Well, okay. I do like to try new things. It looks like apple juice, Sean. Does it taste like apple juice? Uh, yeah. Sure, yep, exactly like apple juice. All right, down the hatch. Ready? One, two, three, cheers. <coughs> that didn't taste like apple juice at all, Sean! Yeah, it doesn't at all, does it? Ah, I remember my first shot of whiskey. My throat's on fire! Up oh, they're here. Hey, hey, how's it going? Great to see you guys. It's been a while. Please, come on in. Grab yourself a drink. Make yourself at home. Does anyone want some vegan cheese balls? I have some vegan cheese balls in the fridge if anyone's interested. Nope, I, uh, I think they're good, Drew. Are you sure, Sean? Vegan cheese balls are pretty delicious, and they're approved by PETA. Everyone here supports PETA, right? Uh, hey, 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 Drew? Can I... 
can I talk to you privately for a minute? About going vegan? Nope, not about going vegan. About how unbelievably weird you're being right now. Oh, okay. I'll be back, everyone! Stay vegan, you crazy party animals! You gotta pull it together, man. I can't, Sean! I'm too nervous! Feel my hands! Oh my god, they're, they're covered in sweat. Drew, I, I think there's something medically wrong with you. I don't know if I can do this, Sean. I think that whiskey made things worse, not better. Drew, all I'm asking of you is to not be weird. And, and to be clear, that means no crying, no talking about your safe space, no getting triggered, none of that. Try to relax and just have a good time. Okay, Sean, I'll try. Good, now let's get back to the party. All right, guys, what do I have? One more cup? <laughs> not a problem at all. Watch this. Yes, all right, that's three games in a row. Never doubt me, never doubt me. Hey, great game, guys. Hi, Sean. Oh, there you are, Drew. Where the hell you been for the last hour? I was upstairs on the phone with Randy. He had another nightmare about Donald Trump winning re-election and needed me to talk him down. What's this game you're playing? This, Drew, is beer pong. The premise is pretty simple. You take turns throwing the ping pong ball and trying to get it into one of the cups on the opposite end of the table. The first player to sink the ball in every cup wins the game. Sean, I'm more confused than when a conservative tries to explain free market economics to me. It's really not that complicated, Drew. Here, let's play some one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, I don't know about that, Sean. The last time you challenged me to a game, I ended up losing and didn't take it so well. Yep, I remember that. You cried so loud that the neighbors ended up calling the cops. But, I mean, who knows? You might be a beer pong pro. Come on, let's go. You can go first. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, just to clarify, you're aiming for the cups. I'm bad at this game, Sean! Oh, come on, Drew, you're not... Well, actually, yeah, you're, you're pretty bad. My turn. And there's one. Nine more to go. Oh, Sean! The cup that the ball landed in has beer in it! I know, that's, that's why it's called beer pong. Normally, you'd have to drink it all, but I'm, I'm not going to pressure you if you don't want to. Nonsense, Sean. I can drink beer just like everybody else. Cheers. <coughs> Sorry, what was that about drinking beer like everyone else? It tastes like cat pee, Sean. I mean, it's cheap beer. What do you expect? It's your turn, by the way. Try to actually get it in the cup this time, all right? Will do, Sean. Hey! Who threw that? Uh, sorry, Big Red. That was Drew here. I'm trying to teach him how to play beer pong. Sorry, Big Red! Drew, you're literally one of the worst pong players I've seen in my life. Y you just need to make it into one of these cups. Why are you throwing it so hard? I'm a fragile snowflake, Sean! Not an athlete! Right, but you don't exactly need to be an athlete to throw a ball in a cup, is all I'm saying. Okay, my turn. And there's another one. <laughs> Alright, I'm two for two. I don't want to play anymore, Sean! All right, Drew, some of the guys want to play poker. I saved you a seat at the table if you want in. Well, I guess so, Sean. Are you sure you asked everyone if they wanted to play Candyland? Yep, I, I did. I asked every single one of them, and strangely, they all said no. That is strange, Sean. Who doesn't love Candyland? Yeah. All right, well, have a seat. Oh, by the way, it's a $20 buy-in. $20? Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. Psst, Sean. Can I borrow $20? Are you kidding me? You know I don't have a job, Sean! My wallet has been empty for as long as I can remember! Alright, fine. I'll pay for your buy-in. But you owe me. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Go ahead and deal. Alright, the person to the left of the dealer bets first. So, uh, Drew, go ahead. Go fish! N no, Drew, we're... We're playing poker, not go fish. Oh yeah, I forgot. Sean, how do you play poker? Oh my god, are you serious? Hey, don't yell at me, Sean! I wanted to play Candyland, but we just had to do things your way. Okay, you know what? I'll help you out for the first round, and then you're on your own. Let me see what cards you have. Thanks, Sean. Take a look. Oh, wow. Drew, yeah, you've got a really good hand here. I do. Yeah, yeah, you do. I've honestly never seen a better hand in all my years playing poker. If I were you, I'd go all in. What does that mean? It means that you bet all of your chips at once. By the end of the round, you'll either win big or lose all your money. 
Well, I guess if I do lose it all, I can just collect money from hard-working taxpayers. As a liberal, I'm very familiar with how that works, Sean. Yep, I bet you are. All right, Sean. If you say that I have a good hand, then I'll go all out. All in. All in. All right, guys. Drew went all in. Everyone place your bets and show your cards. I've got a seven and a two. Beat that, you guys. Oh, I'm sorry, Drew. I have a pair of aces. That means I win. But Sean, you said that I have good cards. Yeah, I lied. Sean, how could you? How am I supposed to keep playing if I don't have any chips left? You don't. You're going to have to walk away from the table. Unless, of course, you have something valuable to bet instead of money. Something valuable? Okay, let's see. Oh, I know. Drew, wh what are you doing? Oh my god! Everyone listen up! This is a limited edition Huggies diaper! Oh, oh god, that's... That's disgusting. Oh my god. Wait, hear me out! It's extra absorbent! God, no. So anyway, this guy trips over the cord and spills his drink all over his new shirt. I couldn't believe it. I looked at him and I said, walk much? <laughs> hey, Sean, it's 2.30 in the morning. Don't you think people should go home now? Uh, no. I'm in the middle of telling some great college stories, Drew. Have a seat. You might enjoy this. Okay, Sean. So this other time, right? My friend Jack was visiting for the weekend and we were planning on going to the sports bar. The only problem was that Jack was about a month away from turning 21 at the time, so he had to use a fake ID. So we get to the bar, and was Jack a conservative? What? Well, it's just that I would enjoy the story a lot more if I knew that Jack wasn't a conservative. So I'll ask you again, Sean. Was he or wasn't he a conservative? Uh, I, I think at one point he mentioned that he votes Republican. I don't know. So anyway, we get to the bar and did he vote for Donald Trump, Sean? Drew, can I please tell my story without you interrupting? Because I can tell you with near 100% certainty that no one else sitting at this table right now cares about Jack's political views. Well, I care, Sean. As a liberal Democrat and a triggered snowflake, you know that I question other people's political views all the time and take it extremely personal when they don't align with my own. Okay, well, the point is moot anyway, because I have no idea if Jack voted for Donald Trump. Okay, Drew? Y'all good? Can I continue now? Yes. Go ahead, Sean. So, as I was saying, we get to the bar, and the bouncer standing at the door is about as intimidating as it gets. I, I mean, I'm talking big black beard, tattoos down both arms. The guy was at least six foot six. And Jack goes to give him his fake ID, and I think you should call him, Sean. For the love of God, Drew, can I please just finish the story? Not until you call Jack and confirm for me that he did not vote for Donald Trump. Forget it. It's almost three in the morning, and plus, I haven't spoken to him in like two years. I'm pretty sure he has family now and everything. Oh, come on, Sean. I need to know. Please. 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 Fine. I'll call him now, and if I get an answer for you, will you please let me go back to my story? Yes, of course, Sean, of course. <sighs> Fine. Yeah, hi, I I'm so sorry for calling this late. I'm trying to reach Jack. Do I have the right number? Oh, oh, this is Jack's wife? Sean, ask if she voted for Trump too. Quiet. Yeah, if I could speak to Jack for just a minute, I would so appreciate it. Again, I'm, I'm so sorry for calling this late at night. Yeah, thank you. She seems nice, Sean. Nope, she's pissed off. Thanks a lot, Drew. Hey, Jack! It's been a while, huh, buddy? Uh, oh, okay, yes. Yes, you have every right to be mad at me because I'm calling you in the middle of the night. Uh, no, no, I haven't lost my mind. Just listen. I need to know if you voted for Donald Trump in 2016. Okay. Okay, great, thanks. Thanks, Jack. And hey, listen, if you're ever in the area... What did he say? Well, first of all, I'm pretty sure he's never going to talk to me again, so thanks for that, Drew. What did he say, Sean? He said, yes, of course he voted for Donald Trump, because he's not, and I quote, a dumbass. I knew it! I just knew it, Sean! I need my safe space! Ah, that was some party, huh, Drew? Don't talk to me right now, Sean. I'm still trying to get over the fact that Jack voted for Donald Trump. Drew, you've never even met the guy before. I mean, you didn't even know he existed until I brought him up in my story. Why do you care so much who he voted for? Sean, I don't care who it is. 
Anytime I hear about someone voting for Donald Trump, I get triggered and go through at least 10 diapers. Oh, that reminds me. If you ever pull your diaper out of your pants and put it on my poker table again, I'm moving out. Fair enough, Sean. Good. And with that, let's get into tonight's main topic, the presidential and vice presidential debates. Joe Biden won, Sean. Next topic? Uh, not quite, Drew. Tell you what, why don't you play with your stuffed lion a bit while I share my thoughts with our listeners? Fine. So I watched the presidential debate live, and at first, I admit, I thought the moderator was pretty fair, or at least fairer than I thought he ever would be. It's not exactly a secret that Chris Wallace isn't the biggest fan of President Trump, so I went into it thinking that he was going to be completely one-sided, firing difficult questions at Trump the whole night while tossing softballs to the former vice president. But after the debate, I found myself saying, you know what, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. But then, I watched the debate for a second time the next day, and I started noticing things that I hadn't noticed the first time through. And by that, I mean Chris Wallace was much stricter on Trump than he was on Joe Biden. He absolutely let his bias show throughout the entirety of the debate. What do you mean by that, Sean? Well, to me, it just seems like every time Trump was about to make a critical point about Joe Biden or expose something about his past, Chris Wallace would jump in and cut him off. I didn't see him doing that nearly as much to Joe Biden. Well, Trump was extremely rude, Sean. He kept talking over Joe Biden. I don't think undecided voters like that very much. And that's a great transition into my next point, Drew. People need to remember that Donald Trump is not a career politician. He is probably the most unconventional president this country will ever have. Some people, such as you, Drew, can't stand that. But others, like me, welcome that with open arms, because after years of the same old song and dance with Clintons and Bushes, we needed a change. So what's your point, Sean? My point is, Donald Trump can't be expected to be a conventional debater because he's not a conventional politician. He has his own unique style and his own way of expressing himself. He is who he is. That's no excuse to constantly talk over Joe Biden, though, Sean. Drew, if someone were standing next to you and accusing you of being a racist and a white supremacist, would you sit there like a bump on a log and take it? Well, I don't. The answer is no, you wouldn't. And Trump shouldn't either. And you know what, Drew? While you might not like the president's style very much, There are millions of Americans who appreciate his willingness to fight back and not let the radical left push him around. You see, Sean, I don't believe in any of that. Don't don't believe in what? Fighting back. When someone confronts me, I find that it's much easier to just run to my safe space and cry for a few hours. Well, that's because unlike our president, Drew, you don't have a spine. Now, as for the vice presidential debate, I've got to say, I think Mike Pence absolutely nailed it. He was knowledgeable, he was well-spoken, and he really resonated with the American people. I don't think Kamala Harris, or Kamala Harris, whatever, I don't think she even knew what hit her. Oh yeah? Well, did you see the fly that landed on his head? Yeah, I did. Your friends in the liberal media talk about it non-stop. In fact, we have some audio that I wanted to play from a segment on MSNBC where anti-Trump Lincoln Project founder Steve Schmidt argued that the fly landing on Pence's head is, quote, the mark of the devil. Take a listen. I mean, I don't think it's ever a good sign when a fly lands on your head for two minutes. You know, that's a that's a sign all through history of sin and historically, biblically, uh, maybe you wouldn't normally say this after uh, you wouldn't. It's only safe to say this, sorry, after midnight, but. You know, the, a fly, he who commands the fly has always been seen historically as the mark of the devil. So I'm just <laughs> well, I'm not Steve, relevant, but, but, it, but it, I, having the fly now as a journalist, your, never, now I have to never, ask for the record, are you joking? Because uh, it, the fly could have landed on anyone. Yes, but it didn't. It landed on Mike Pence and it, and it says something. You see, this is what desperation sounds like. This idiot had no clue how to criticize Mike Pence because there's really nothing to criticize Mike Pence about. So in the end, he resorts to comparing him to the devil. It's just so pathetic. And the fact that this was actually brought up during a segment on national news is a disgrace. Then we have this article published in USA Today titled, What Kamala Harris Put Up With. Let me try to make it through the first few paragraphs. This from USA Today. As a black woman on a national stage debating a white man, Senator Kamala Harris had to do more than offer her vision for America on Wednesday night. 
Harris, the first woman of color chosen to join a major party ticket, was expected not only to follow the explicit rules of the vice presidential debate, but also the unspoken rules of her gender and race. To be calm and collected in the face of disrespect, to resist emotionality, and as a black woman, to especially resist anger. Vice President Mike Pence was not tasked with walking that tightrope. He broke even the most basic rules, repeatedly trying to bulldoze Harris and ignore moderator Susan Page's authority. Experts in gender and political science say Harris had to temper herself, police herself, to tread carefully in ways Pence did not. Many women who watched the debate saw an all-too-familiar spectacle of sexism and racism. So there you go, folks. According to USA Today, Mike Pence getting the best of Kamala Harris during the debate was an example of racism and sexism. This is such an absurd argument that it's a wonder how anyone could take this even remotely seriously. Well, I take it seriously, Sean. Racism and sexism is something that should be condemned by all of us. Sure, sure, I agree. But tell me one thing that Mike Pence did during the debate that was sexist or racist. Just one thing. I'll wait. Well, he explained things, and and he used facts. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> Folks, I am so, so excited to introduce our special guest. You know him on TikTok for his hilarious political sketches, and quite frankly, for his awesome facial hair. Please welcome, for the first time on the Sean and Drew podcast, Big Red Mustache. Hey, thanks, guys. I really appreciate y'all having me on here. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we're so happy to have you on, and I I tell you what, we've really been looking forward to this, too. Well, I haven't been looking forward to it, Sean. And why is that, Drew? Because Big Red Mustache makes liberal snowflakes such as myself look like a bunch of whiny crybabies. Well, I I mean, Drew, you, you kind of are a whiny crybaby. I am not, Sean! I am not! Don't say that! I rest my case. So, Big Red Mustache, tell us a little bit about yourself. What kind of things do you like to do when you're not hilariously mocking liberals on TikTok? I really don't have a lot of free time. The free time I do have, I like to spend with my family, you know, hang out. Got three kids. Uh, Most of the time I'm working, though. I'm a firefighter, paramedic, and... That takes up a lot of my time, and I also manage a a chain of restaurants, but besides that, I like to, you know, work out, stay active, and, you know, just enjoy life. Well, speaking of working out, I think everyone listening right now would agree that you could probably rip Drew over here in half. Stop it, Sean! I work out too, you know! Drew, I went downstairs the other day and saw you using a foam noodle as a weight. You won't be mocking me like this when I have muscles of steel, Sean! Yeah, that won't ever happen. So, Big Red Mustache, I gotta admit, the content that you make for TikTok absolutely cracks me up. You portray a liberal perfectly, and you deserve every one of the 181,000 followers that you currently have. Tell us a little bit about how you got started on TikTok. I first started TikTok about a year ago, and I really didn't know what it was. My daughter had it, and... You know, she was like, hey, Dad, help me make a video. So, uh, you know, I'd help her do some. Then I decided I'd download it, you know, see what it was all about. And then I figured I would do a a video just to make her laugh. And I didn't realize that when I posted it that, you know, it went public. I mean, this is before I knew anything about it. And uh, in my first video, I don't know, within the first hour or two it got like six thousand views and uh my daughter says dad you're viral and i'm like what and she's like your video has six thousand views i mean she's been on there a couple years and she never got that kind of uh (laughs) attention on any of her videos so i was like oh okay i really didn't know what it meant she was like and then she told me how many likes it uh had you know and i really thought i did something so then I was like, you know, we could make some uh we could make some funny stuff on here. I started watching other people's videos and I actually made one uh during Christmas time and it was kind of like a, a parody of the video with uh Andy Sandberg and 
uh, Justin Timberlake, the dick in the box. I kind of did one like that uh, to my wife. It's funny. You just have to see it. Anyway, it got like 3.5 million uh, views and like 400 something thousand likes. And that, that video really did go viral. And uh, I was like, wow, you know, this is uh, getting a lot of attention. Maybe I can do something else. And and then I did uh, my first political video. I did uh, Marching Against Liberals. It was to a sound. Uh, I can't remember what uh, movie it was off of. But a lot of people, a lot of people liked it. And then also it pissed a lot of people off. And I just kind of, it kind of egged me on a little bit. I'm like, you know, this is an election year, you know, I could probably create a platform on here. And then I started doing more political stuff and, uh, and it just kind of started taking off from there. I did a whole bunch of videos uh, ripping my shirt off and, you know, getting loud and, you know, just kind of egged me on a little bit. But yeah, it's been fun and uh, I've really enjoyed it. I love it. And kudos to your daughter for introducing you to the platform. It sounds like if it weren't for her, there may never have been a big red mustache as we know him today. I find it interesting how you said that your TikTok account really started to take off after you began posting conservative content. Have you always been a conservative, by the way? Yes, I have always been a conservative. Uh, That's how I was brought up. Actually, my whole family is conservative. And that's how I'm I'm raising my kids because uh, conservatism to me is God, family, and country. And that's how I live my life. And, you know, I, I like to teach my kids to have values like that. And that's how we decide who we vote for. If you look at the the agenda of the Democrats and the agenda of the uh, the Republicans, you wouldn't even have to know the candidates to make your vote. Because if you do your vote, if you make your decision on what it says in the Bible and pick whichever side you want that goes the closest with the Bible, you make your decision like that, then you're probably a conservative. And, uh, you know, that's just who I am. I like to, I like to be a man, a family man. And, you know, I try to do the right thing. You know, I'm so glad that you answered that question the way you did. I'm the same way. Really, conservatism to me isn't as much a political affiliation as it is a way of life. It's putting family above all else. It's fighting to preserve traditions. It's having an appreciation for the fact that you live in the greatest country the world has ever seen. That's what conservatism is at its core, and I don't think that those on the left quite understand that. Well, I understand it, Sean. I understand that conservatives are big meanies that offend snowflakes all the time. You understand nothing, Drew. Literally nothing. So, Big Red Mustache, let's talk about Donald Trump. The guy has a list of accomplishments a mile long, so I realize that this might be a difficult question, but in your opinion, what do you think is the president's biggest accomplishment so far? Man, that's a tough one there. I guess besides, uh, you know, making peace in the Middle East, one of the biggest ones, in my opinion, is uh, how he's lowered the cost of insulin for people. Man, there, there's been a lot of people that have had to choose their insulin or or whether or not they eat. And he's made it to where they can do both. And that's just an amazing thing right there. You know, he, lo- he not only loves his country, he loves the people. And, you know, he's gotten a hold of uh, human trafficking. He's putting, I mean, just a... A stop to that too and which no other president has ever done that and you know that's why we need him for four more years so he can get a hold of these things but yeah that that's a he's done so much for our country so far and a lot of people just don't know and uh 
but yeah, that that's that's the big ones there for me. Well, you're so right. He really has done so much for the country, and yet so many people on the left just don't see it. They're too busy worrying about the president's demeanor, or his taxes, or some other nonsense. So I spent a little time earlier in the podcast talking about the first presidential debate, and I wanted to get your thoughts on that. How do you think it went? It went about like I expected it to. You know, Trump, he was being the typical Trump, you know, not holding back. Joe Biden, the same old idiot. Joe Biden is so cringy, though. I mean, he he just got one of them faces that just kind of gets under your skin, those beady little eyes. I don't know what it is. He just makes my skin crawl. It's almost like, all right, here's an example of how cringy Joe Biden is. I've got a bag of corn chips right here. Now listen to this. Have you ever heard uh, someone eating corn chips over a telephone or over a microphone or something like that? It's so cringy. And that's how Joe Biden is. And I'm going to give you an example. Listen to this. You hear that? That's cringy, right? Someone eating in your ear. That's that's what I think of Joe Biden every time he talks. I mean, but yeah, overall, the debates, they were uh, kind of entertaining. I got frustrated the most by Chris Wallace. I knew he was a liberal, but he took it to the next level on that deal. I think Fox needs to fire him and he needs to go work for CNN because I think he'd fit in a lot better over there. Yeah, Chris Wallace is definitely one of the more left-leaning hosts on Fox News, and he let that bias show multiple times throughout the debate. The man clearly doesn't like Trump, and to be honest, I don't think Trump likes him very much either. And speaking of the media, let me ask you this. Over the past few weeks, we've seen so many fake news articles published about Donald Trump whether it was the baseless claim that he insulted World War II veterans, the whole non-controversy about his taxes, and so on. You and I both know that all of this is just a bunch of BS, but do you think any of it will hurt the president's chances for re-election? I really don't think that these stories are, are going to hurt him, because at this point, I think the majority of the people have their mind made up already of who they're going to vote for. And these liberals and these Democrats, they're going to believe what they believe already. If they've been buying into all the CNN and and all the liberal uh, media, then you just can't you can't get through to those people. But I really I really think that that we're going to be all right. So and I, and I, don't, I don't think it's going to hurt Trump. I don't think it's going to hurt him at all. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I mean, the media have been attacking him for four years, and yet his base hasn't gone anywhere. And yet, we still have a lot of low IQ voters in this country who believe this garbage and plan on voting for Joe Biden as a result. I mean, truth be told, I really don't think Joe Biden has a prayer, but if he does pull it off somehow, how damaging, in your opinion, would a Biden administration be to the progress Trump has made so far? Now, that's just something that's uh, scary to think about. And, I mean, you know that if he does happen to get it, that he's going to go in behind Trump and try to erase all the good that that he's done. I think he'll put us right back into another recession. I mean, their policies and and ideas that they have are just, they're too far-fetched and they're just trying to lead us down a, a socialist path, and that that could be the downfall of of America. But I don't know. We probably have to just rise up and uh, <laughs> try to overthrow the overthrow the government. I don't know. I just uh, I don't see it happening, though. In my opinion. Well, I think a Biden administration is just what the country needs. Ah, uh, Drew, you were being so quiet. It was so nice. 
I was hoping it would say like that for the rest of the interview, but you just had to open your mouth. Sean, Joe Biden just looks like such a nice guy. Just look at how nice he is whenever he's around children. Drew, do me a favor, never have children, okay? All right, well, listen, Big Red Mustache, it's been an absolute privilege to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Where can people find you online? Actually, right now, the only place that you can probably find me online is is TikTok. Now, I, I've been thinking about expanding my platform and maybe taking it to Instagram or YouTube, but for right now, it's just TikTok. I've had fun with it, and uh, it's really all I've had time to time for so you know we'll see we'll see after after the election and everything and i may try to expand i I have a lot of ideas so we'll see we'll see how it goes well we'll definitely be on the lookout for whatever new projects you have in store but again thank you so much for joining us on the podcast it was a real good time hey i just want to say that it's been a real honor doing this and uh, thank you so much for having me I'm a huge fan. I love all your content, man. It keeps me laughing, gives me new ideas too. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. And one more thing before I go, I just want to say, Vote Trump 2020! No, no, why did he have to say that, Sean? Why? Why? Ah, you'll get over it. Ladies and gentlemen, that about does it for episode two of the Sean and Drew podcast. I'm having a blast doing this, and we're going to keep it going with a new episode every other Tuesday. That's right, Sean. That means we'll be back Tuesday, October 27th for a special Halloween episode. Yeah, that should be a fun one. I've got some fun things in store for you, Drew. (laughs) Sean, why'd you just do an evil laugh? What do you have planned, Sean? Hey, if you want to submit a question or comment to be read live on the podcast, don't forget to send emails to jasonveely76 at gmail.com. That's J-A-Y-S-O-N-V-E-L-E-Y 76 at gmail.com. We also have a P.O. Box if you'd like to send us something through the mail. The address for our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 190-119, Weathersfield, Connecticut, 06129. Thank you again so much for listening, and until next time, this is Sean and Drew signing off.